I gotta tell you something, no one is loving this pandemic more than Justin Trudeau. Viva Fry, Montreal litigator turned YouTuber, and this is Winnie the Westie. You know, when I first came up with that intro to the vlog, I felt a little guilty. Maybe it was a little too snarky and sassy, and then I just remembered Justin Trudeau's own words. He quite literally said that this pandemic was a great opportunity for a reset. This pandemic has provided an opportunity for a reset. His Deputy Prime Minister of Canada, Chrystia Freeland, I believe she referred to it as a political opportunity. An epiphany. I really believe COVID has created a window of political opportunity and maybe an epiphany, an epiphany, an epiphany. So when I say that no one in Canada is loving this pandemic more than Justin Trudeau, it is not to be snarky, it is not to be sassy, it is not to be hyperbolic. Justin Trudeau can quite literally hide out in his house and govern through order in council as he did with the firearm ban in the early stages of this pandemic. And for those of you who don't know, I did a vlog on that subject. I'll just flash a clip right now for posterity. Regardless of how you might feel about this particular law, this is not how laws should be passed in a free and democratic society. Now, for those of you who may not know, Justin Trudeau just announced a ban on over 1,500 types of military-grade assault weapons in Canada. And for those of you who may not know, Justin Trudeau is the Prime Minister of Canada. Prime Minister is sort of like the American President of Canada. And for those of you who may not know, Canada is that country to the north of the United States. So Justin Trudeau quite literally overnight with the stroke of a pen outlaws some 1500 types of military grade assault weapons. Today, we are closing the market for military grade assault weapons in Canada. Well, almost a year later, Justin Trudeau is exploiting of this political opportunity that is the pandemic to ram through another piece of legislation. He's not going by way of order in council this time because apparently the underlying law does not allow him to proceed by way of order in council, but he is ramming through an amendment to the Canada's Broadcasting Act. The amendment is now the famous or the infamous Bill C-10, but before we get into the amendment, we need to understand what the Canada's Broadcasting Act is itself. Under the administrative authority of the Canadian Radio Television Television and Telecommunications Commission, the CRTC, content that meets the needs and interests of Canadians. Broadcasting plays a critical role in helping build and support our Canadian identity. That's very interesting. Is that the same Canadian identity that Justin Trudeau denied existed in the first place? What? What the f In recognition of this, Canada's Broadcasting Act sets out objectives to ensure that Canadian broadcasting content meets the needs and interests of Canadians. The CRTC then sets policies and rules to ensure that those objectives are put into practice in Canada's broadcasting system. Simply put, the Broadcasting Act applied to traditional media, radio, and television and imposed certain criteria, certain standards that needed to be met in order to ensure that Canadian content was being prioritized. And just because I will not be able to say it any better than fellow Canadian YouTuber JJ McCullough, here is a clip from his video on Bill C-10. You see, under present Canadian law, the Canadian federal government, acting through a media regulatory agency known as the CRTC, has the power to meddle with traditional media in Canada in all sorts of ways. The CRTC tells radio stations what sort of songs they have to play, when certain shows on television have to be aired, and even what cable channels you have to buy. CRTC rules are supposed to push audiences towards good, patriotic Canadian content and away from bad foreign content, or even Canadian content that's not quite Canadian enough. The purported goal of the Broadcasting Act was to promote Canadian content on radio and television, but the thing that happened in the last year, which we all noticed, online streaming really took off. Online streaming like Netflix, online content like YouTube, which was not governed by the Broadcasting Act and the government never letting a good crisis go to waste says, hey, we should really get that stuff under the law that is the Broadcasting Act. So they proposed an amendment to make the Broadcasting Act apply to streaming and online content. Okay, think what you will of that proposed amendment. People's concerns were that, well, if this applies to the internet, it might apply to user-generated content such as my own content or posts that you put on social media like Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. The Trudeau government being ever transparent and trustworthy said, don't worry people, we will include a specific provision in this bill, an exclusion if you will, so that the law will not apply to user-generated content on social media. By including such an exclusion in the bill, it would protect individuals such as my 
myself or you, anybody who posts on social media, don't worry, your post will not fall within the ambit of this bill. Except the Trudeau government being ever transparent and trustworthy at the last minute and very quietly exploiting of the heat of this pandemic amended that proposed amendment to remove that exclusion from the bill. And to pull a clip from perhaps one of the last respectable politicians in Canada, Pierre Poilievre, and don't worry, Maxime Bernier, I am including you in that short list of respectable politicians that are left in Canada. This is what Pierre Poilievre has to say about the last minute amendment to exclude the exclusion from the proposed bill. Originally, they said that the posts that everyday people like your, you and I did on our social media and on YouTube and elsewhere would be excluded by a specific exemption contained in the bill. Well, that was until quite recently when Liberals showed up at a parliamentary committee and quietly amended the bill to remove the exemption and put the bill in charge of the posts that you and I would make. The absurd bottom line to all of this, if the exclusion is not included in the bill, the new Bill C-10 would basically make all online content fall under the authority of the CRTC. From what I understand, it could compel not only the Netflixes of the internet, but the me's of the internet, the use of the internet, anybody posting on social media, it can force them to comply with the Broadcasting Act and all of its ancillary regulations. It could require content creators like myself to create a certain amount of Canadian content, it could penalize us if we don't create enough Canadian content. The sky is the limit as to what this can do on the internet. One thing is for certain, it is a violation of free speech and the government is trying to cram it down our throats in the midst of a pandemic. It is just another step in Canada's slide from a democracy to an outright, I don't know what to call it, totalitarian regime with absolutely no freedoms, let alone the freedom of speech. The Washington Post's motto is democracy dies in darkness. The Liberal Party of Canada's motto is democracy dies under Justin Trudeau. This government has been a failure from beginning to end and they have not hesitated to exploit of this pandemic to ram through unpopular legislation that people don't necessarily know about and that doesn't get the public scrutiny it otherwise would in the absence of a pandemic. That is a very quick overview of this Bill C-10 and as far as I am concerned it is a hard no and people need to know that, people need to share the message and people need to get that message to Justin Trudeau. Or I guess more accurately we need to get that message to other lawmakers so they all vote this thing down and my goodness we need a new election in Canada so we can get a responsible government in charge of this country before this country is unrecognizable. That is the overview. Hold on, we gotta get Winston in here. That is the overview of Bill C-10. And like I like to say, Bill C-10 in my rear end. Actually, that's probably not the best way of protesting it. Either way, now you know, share this video, make your voice heard. And if you like my videos, you like my content, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and drop a comment in the comment section below because it feeds the algorithm. Feed me all night long. If you want to support the channel, all of these support links are in the pinned comment. We've got PayPal, Patreon, subscribe to our YouTube membership. We've got merch. Keep calm and vlog on Robert Barnes and I do weekly live streams every Sunday. We do weekly streams with a guest every Wednesday called The Sidebar. We have a page on Locals. It is Viva Barneslaw.locals.com. All of my stuff is also on Rumble, so you can follow me there if you are so inclined. But more important than any of that, take care of yourselves. Check in on friends and family. Make sure everyone around you is doing well. And now you know your vlog. Peace out. Booyah!